What's up, people? It's your man, Chef from Off The Dome, back in for another video. Today, I'm making a quick one. The top three things that I believe really hurt the Migos and why they are pretty much doing when it comes to Culture 3. I'm not going to be able to say, like, I'm not going to say what other people have said to say that uh, Culture 3 will be a complete flop and failure. I do believe Culture 3 go number one. They just have to release it in January next year. And it asked me from January probably to March. And it can't be around any other major album releases. It will have to be a week like last week we saw with Big Sean and 6ix9ine. Before 6ix9ine got, you know, his items taken away for eligibility, he had a 1 to 50,000 debut. Taylor Swift album died down. And, of course, Big Sean the tour three. Apparently now we know his albums are only 103,000 first week, which is low in my opinion for a Big Sean album. So, the Migos have to drop around the town where no other artists are going to drop a surprise album or a scheduled drop album. So, they have to talk to everybody in the industry to make sure no one's dropping anything major, at least in the hip hop, RB, and pop industry. But, number three, I think this didn't completely hurt the Migos, but it hurt them at least a good 20%. And it's offset, it's, it's offset Dane Cardi B. By Offset Dane Cardi B, it really did put a sting on Amigos. It made the relationship bigger than the music. And, you know, basically, a lot of people care more about Offset and Cardi B's relationship and Cardi B's dynamic with Offset and Offset cheating on Cardi B than the whole Culture 2 album, in my opinion. It really took a lot of the energy away from them when they released Culture 2. And it's one of the main reasons why they, can't have, they haven't really recovered from 2018. Number two, and this, it was number one at first until I realized that there was a bigger thing than this, which number two is the oversaturation of the Migos. Dropping Culture 2, literally January, the anniversary of Culture 1, wasn't the greatest idea. At the time, they had Slippery at the end of the year. That was one of the singles that they were pushing. They also, at that time, released Stir Fry. They should let Stir Fry and Motorsport do its thing before dropping Culture 2. They could have dropped Culture 2 anytime in the spring or maybe even the summer of 2018. But they chose to drop it, of course, in the beginning of 2018. Another thing they had going for them, they also had many features. Quavo and Offset, of course, doing features. Yeah, the without warning thing with 21 Savage and Offset, which Ric Flair Drip at that time was rising up the charts. Yeah, I Get the Bag with Gucci Man, which was a huge hip hop and RB single, and much, much more. So, to be honest, in my opinion, I think dropping Culture 2 in January 2018 was the biggest mistake they could have made. It showed that. The Migos were one of one trick pony. Culture two wasn't as good as Culture one, and it showed that they basically rep, they repeat the same formula for each song. And I think that turned a lot of people off. And of course, the oversaturation of Quavo in general that year. So 2017 was Quavo's year for features. He was almost on any hit song. So by dropping Culture two, you have more and more Quavo. And number one, and the biggest reason why the Migos possibly killed a lot of their steam. Is them all three of them releasing debut albums? Yes. And on top of that, Offset didn't release his first. Offset released his last. But Offset released his album last out the three. That made it worse because Quavo dropped his first. Quavo's was successful commercially, yes, but quality wise, it was a dud. I listened to it. I don't remember much off that album. Working Me Lily is the best song, and I think it's another song with him and Sweetie that's decent. But there's not much on the album that's rememberable, and it's pretty much hook, 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 generic auto-tune verse. Once Quavo released his album, I knew that, oh, man, it's going to be hard for the other two guys to release theirs. And then, sure enough, Takeoff releases his album, and although I'm a decent Takeoff fan, like, I was a huge Takeoff fan. Once he released his solo album, I realized, now I understand why he's the third Migo. I understand why people say he might can't make it on his own. He delivers decent hard-hitting verses. I like his flow, but Takeoff's album wasn't the best album. And overall, the first week numbers for that was pretty sad. Good for Takeoff, but overall for an album, doing 54K isn't the best numbers. And lastly, Offset with his 89K getting beat out by Gunna. Once his album got beat out by Gunna and others on the chart that week, I think it Star is Born... I think Drip Harder was number two, and then I think Gunner was number three with Drip or Drown. Once Gunner beat Offset, that kind of put a third sting on Amigos because Offset couldn't even beat Gunner. And Gunner at the time was seen as little baby sidekick, so it really, really made Offset look pretty small and shallow. And the other fact is, like I said before, Ric Flair Drip was Offset's biggest single. He already wasted a good single on someone else's project, 21 Savage, and his own shared collaboration with Metro Boomer. Offset album 
it really didn't have a huge single. Red Room didn't do as well as people thought it should. Clout, once again, goes back to the Cardi B and Offset dynamic. So, once again, you have to get assist from your wife to be successful and puts more attention to the relationship other than the music. Anyway, make sure you like, comment, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think about my assessment of the Migos. And I'll see you next time. This is Chef from Off the Dome. Peace.